Hey there, Nick Junithakis here. In this video, we're going to go over a new addition to my dot files, which are a couple of aliases to help start and stop recording videos. Now, you might not be recording videos, but the takeaway of this video is not around videos specifically. You know, these are things that you can do to automate whatever you're doing in your day to day, because at the end of the day, we're just looking at a couple of shell scripts here. And by the way, everything is available on GitHub, and I'll leave a link to this one in the description. So check this out. This is my typical terminal font size. And if you've watched any videos in the past, you'll know that typically, you know, I zoom in like this just to make it a little bit legible on video so people don't need to squint if they're using a smaller device but this is my normal terminal font size and you know there's a couple of things that i do before i start recording a video such as you know using a windows utility called sizer to like resize this window and move it into a specific spot i've actually done a video about that one in the past so i'll drop that into a link to a card but watch this if i just do start recording which is the alias i've created it does a number of things so number one, it is going to back up my bash history because, you know, if I'm using something like FCF and reverse searching my history on video, you know, typically I don't want to show what's in my bash history because it could be leaking client data because I am a freelance developer. So I'm always worried about that. And, you know, having to go into the video and scrub it frame by frame to like blur accidental things, you know, it's not only just time consuming, but maybe I can make a human mistake and suddenly I'm like leaking out client information. So this script automates uh, just backing up your history. Then I happen to be using Terminal Vim, and since I am using WSL2, the temp directory doesn't get cleared out when you reboot. So I find in practice that I have a lot of temporary Vim files sitting in this directory, and then sometimes like I'll just reopen a project, and then uh, you know that little prompt that comes up that says, hey, by the way, you already have this file open. Do you actually want to open it? And then there's like 11 teen options to choose. Uh, that gets really annoying, especially on video when you need to do stuff like that. So this will just clear out all those temporary files uh, in the temp directory because in my vimrc file, that's where I have this being out to. And then in addition to that, it will also uh, increase the terminal font size to 18 and all this stuff is quite configurable by the way. And then, you know, it just outputs some uh, little text here just as a personal reminder to myself, right? So it's like, hey, by the way, are you gonna be using like tmux sessions in your video? Then maybe just save your current session and then kill the tmux server because, uh, you know, if you're switching between sessions on video and those sessions have like client names and project names that you don't want to leak out, you know, that's one thing to think about. Also, when it comes to using a browser, right? It's a pretty good idea to use a browser that doesn't have a history of things in there. Again, we're not talking about those things in the history, but maybe technically, but maybe technically not. But, you know, again, like I just don't want to have to worry about blurring out my history, right? And then there's like various tips here as well, right? Like I find myself in practice a ton of times, I always just type out the clear command, but why not just do control L, which is going to clear the screen a lot faster. I don't need to type it. And then also again, just like personal reminders, like, Hey, by the way, Nick, make sure the window are in the right place. Uh, be mindful of secrets if you're going to be recording stuff where, you know, you might need to blur out some secrets or hide them or, you know, stuff like that. And uh, I happen to be using OBS to do all of my recording. So let's actually make sure that you are recording or streaming if and when that is applicable because, yeah, I've done that a lot of times where I just slammed out like a 20 minute video and I forgot to hit start or start. Well, I forgot to hit start on OBS and then suddenly it's like, oh crap, I forgot to actually record. Oh, Got to do it all over again. Uh, but then, you know, here's the opposite of running the start recording script. I can run stop recording and then that is going to do a couple of things here. I know the font size is super, sm super small, so I'm actually going to manually zoom in just so we can read it here. But what it does, you know, it just reverts your history back to normal. So the backup just is now your regular bash history. So you don't lose anything. And then also it just reduces the terminal font to whatever size that you like. And then, you know, it just gives yourself a pat in the back. Nice work. But here's, you know, a couple of things you may want to do. For example, if you are using Tmux sessions, then you'll want to launch Tmux and then just uh, do a leader control R there to restore your Tmux from Tmux Resurrect. You know, that's how it's being saved there. I think I've done a video about that in the past. Maybe not. If not, then uh, that's a pretty good video to make because saving your Tmux sessions and restoring them is quite nice. So that's basically how the alias works. So now let me go into my aliases file here and we'll take a look at some of the code to make this work. And this is a available on GitHub right now. So here is the start recording script. I'm actually going to bump down the font just a little bit so we can see it all in one shot. Well, I guess it's not super important, right? Like we're just using cat here to basically uh, print out a multi-line string. I've done videos about that one in the past. I'll leave an example of a real world application of that in a card. But you know, this is all just, you know, random little things here output using a variable here for the terminal size that's defined up here because uh, with the Microsoft terminal, I happen to be using font size nine normally, but I just bump it up to 18 as a baseline. So these are in uh, variables here. So I output them there. And then I have another alias that I created called change terminal font. And we're gonna go over all this stuff, don't worry. Uh, but this is up here. It's a very, very simple script that just basically changes uh, programmatically the Microsoft terminal config, uh, the actual font size, uh, 
uh, attribute there in the config file. You know, this is pretty specific to me, but if you're using the Microsoft terminal, I did do a little bit of scripting here to pull out your actual Windows username. So the path is going to be automatically defined uh, as long as you are using my dot files with that WSL conf. Otherwise, you know, you might need to use slash NNT slash C instead of slash C there. You know, if you're using a different terminal, you know, chances are you are modifying my dot file. So you would just change this to be your terminal config and you can just match on whatever you need to match here to change the font size. But you can actually run this uh, independently of any other alias, right? I can just open up a terminal here and run change uh, terminal font to like 32 and then there it goes and then apparently I don't even know how to use my own script so I had to change it from 9 to 32 or you know I can just go back from 32 to 9 and there we go actually that's a good example here uh, because well what did I do oh yeah uh, so I just reverted my font size back to 9 so now it's small so let me go back to here because normally you know I wouldn't be literally recording videos about changing font sizes so it's always fun like that but yeah going back to here you know echo usage uh, we just want to make sure that we actually do pass in from to 2 that's what we saw in the other terminal window here and then normally, you know, I wouldn't even be opening other tabs here. Normally, I'm just opening up uh, additional Tmux windows on the bottom, but I'm actually not even running Tmux here. So anyways, you know, that's a change terminal font uh, function, which is kind of a part of both of these aliases, but, you know, you can technically run it independently. But yeah, for start recording, here's what we do, right? We just move your bash history here to a backup file. And, you know, if you're using something like ZSH instead, you may need to change the file name there. And then it just runs uh, history C here, which is going to clear. So let me bump this up a little bit here so we can just take a look here at uh, history.help menu here so we can see the C flag in all its glory. So this just clears the history by deleting all the entries. So just, uh, you know, renaming the file itself doesn't count. Well, technically it's, you know, it, it does what it does, but it's not going to clear your history on the spot without opening up like another bash session. So using history C here is going to ensure that if I start to use, uh, you know, uh, control R here to reverse search my history, that is going to be a completely empty history. And then, you know, we just RM that temp directory there for all the vim files. They all happen to start with uh, percent, and then I'm just grabbing all of them. We're doing a forceful one here so we don't get some errors in case this temp directory uh, is empty for some case. And then we just change the terminal font size, and then uh, I'll get to this in a sec here, but then we just output everything uh, that we saw on the screen before. Now, there is an, uh, a flag that you can type in, an optional one, where you can do dash dash OBS, which is going to actually launch OBS. And, you know, I didn't run that when I ran the script before because I'm already running OBS right now. This is exactly how I'm recording. And, yep, I just double checked. I am recording. Nice, because I really didn't check that at the start, even though I should have. Now, this is a little bit funky, but um, oddly enough, when you run... Uh, WSL view, which is a program to launch, I guess, other programs that exist in Windows. So it, it's kind of strange because normally you can run stuff like, you know, explorer.exe like this, and, and this will actually just run and it's going to open explorer in the current directory uh, and it's all good. It's going to look a little weird because everything is like zoomed out. But you know, this is Windows Explorer launched from WSL and it's all looking great, all working good. But uh, for whatever reason, uh, you cannot launch OBS directly like this. I don't know why, but what I found was I had to use this WSL view program and it was very picky about uh, running OBS specifically. I had to CD into the directory first. I literally couldn't just put the path here and run the program. That didn't work. It would just be not found and you get some error or whatever. And then finally, you know, before or after running the program, I just CD back to uh, the previous directory we were in. This needs to be redirected to dev null, otherwise it will just print out uh, your home directory. Little fun things like that. Technically, the CD going back one directory isn't needed, but if I didn't put this there, uh, so let me just comment this out and I'll just open up a new bash session here so we can take a look at this one. And I do start recording, well actually, uh, I don't know what's going to happen right now. We're about to go into uncharted territory. OBS is already running, but I'm going to try running with the dash dash OBS flag. I know it's zoomed out, but it's about to be zoomed in. Will the world end? Let's see. We're still alive. Ah, OBS is already running. Cool, man. Thank you very much. Uh, and there we go. So we got to actually see it work. But uh, we can see here, you know, everything loaded. Um, and, you know, I didn't run a separate copy of OBS because I didn't want to do that. But the reason uh, I wanted to really launch this is take a look here at the title bar here. Uh, it says that we're in like the OBS directory here. Whereas if I put this back and I did the same thing, then it is going to not do that. So let me do stop recording just so we remove our history and so it's back to normal. We'll get to that in a second, by the way. So I just close that fast. Don't feel like you need to pause the video to see that. But, you know, if I were to rerun this again, now that will actually just go back to where I was before. So that's why I have the CD dash in there. Uh, we don't really need to see that. You can just take my word for it. I promise it does what it does. Uh, but yeah, that's starting recording. And then we also have stop recording, which is, you know, uh, the opposite of that, right? 
Um, so now it's like, well, we want to take our terminal font from 18 down to nine. Let's revert our backup history file to the regular history file. And then we'll just reload it history. So going back to here, I'm going to go, because normally you wouldn't have to play with zooming all this in because I never use these new tabs, but you know, that's what we're doing here because I'm not running Tmux like an idiot. I should have ran it beforehand, but not a big deal. But uh, yeah, here, here's history R, right? Read the history file and append the contents to the history list. So after we revert our backup to the regular one, we just load it into the history and now you can do control R and it's like you never left. Your history is back to normal and uh, that's really nice. So then we just change the terminal font from the, you know, from the from size to the to size. And then we also have uh, the output here that just says, you know, a couple of things that happened. Uh, let's actually uh, run start recording here just so I can do the stop right in one shot so we can see everything in one screen. Stop recording, there we go. Again, I have to zoom in again because the stop recording reverts it to the smaller size, but uh, that's about good, right? I think we can read everything, but we can see stop recording here, right? The bash history has been restored and then terminal file has been restored and then it's like, hey, nice work. And then, yep, there we go. Let's just restore our history just like we saw before earlier in the video. So that is basically how all of this works. Uh, you know, not a ton of coding here, but it's quite useful. And for someone like me who makes videos all the time, you know, this really helps me in my day to day. You know, if you're making videos and you want to use it, great. If you're doing something else, you know, let me know in the comments below what you're going to use this type of thing for. With that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.